Now that video applies the Feynman Kutch theorem to the bond pricing model of Vasicek. The assumption of the model is as follows. We assume the short rate RT follows a linear Eto stochastic differential equation, both under the empirical distribution P and also under the risk neutral probability measure Q. So mathematically, we write the dynamic under Q as follows, where kappa r upper bar Q and sigma r are positive constants. And dz is a Brownian motion innovation under the risk neutral probability measure Q. Now we won't look at the p-dynamic because the pricing here will be defined under Q. And we don't want to talk about risk premia. Therefore, we don't need to talk about Q versus P. So in fact, Vasicek 1977 derived the price of a default free bond with maturity tau given the above assumption. And he showed the solution looks as follows where aq tau and bq tau are deterministic functions of the short rate parameters under q. I now apply the feynman kutch theorem to derive the solution. So applying feynman kutchs formula to the Vasicek bond valuation problem gives us the following. The conditional expectation under q as of time t of the exponent of minus the integrated short rate is what we define to be a function u that depends on the time today, it depends on r, and it depends on time to maturity, cap t. Now applying Feynman Kutch, we know that the solution to the conditional expectation, which is u, has to solve the following partial differential equation. Now A here denotes the generator of the Ito diffusion for a function u. Now solving that PDE works with the guess and verify method. It means we make an educated guess and then we show the guess is correct. If your guess is wrong, then you will see that in the PDE. Because look at the PDE, the left hand side has to equal the right hand side. And it only equals if you use the right guess. So now we guess that the conditional expectation as of time t for maturity capital T takes an exponential affine shape, meaning we guess the solution is e to the minus aq, which is a function of time to maturity, cap t minus small t, minus bq, which also is a function of time to maturity, times the short rate rt. And subject to here, we write that as an initial value condition which says aq of 0, bq0 zero equals 0. And that is just, if cap t minus little t is 0, it means we've approached the end. And these initial value conditions have been now just re-expressed in terms of being a function of cap t minus little t. And therefore the terminal value condition of the Feynman Kutch PDE is here just rewritten as an initial value condition. And that needs to be zero because only if AQ0, BQ0 are zero, it means that at maturity, the bond is worth a dollar. Now, step number two, we now try to verify that the guess for U solves indeed the PDE. And while verifying, we will see that there will be constraints that identify the AQ and the BQ functions. Now let's just do that. Let's plug the guess into the PDE. 
and you derive and you arrive at the following equation here. Note for shorthand notation, I just write the first derivative of aq with regard to t. So I leave away or I leave out that aq and bq are functions of t minus t. Okay. Now, since the left hand side has to equal the right hand side, yeah, that's the point of an equation left equals right. We know that whatever stands on the left hand side here, it's just 1 times rt needs to equal to the right hand side. Therefore, we derive two restrictions. And that will allow us to identify the parametric functions for aq and bq. Now let's see that in detail. Now the left hand side of that PDE has a zero constant. Therefore, we get the first restriction with regard to the constant. It says zero on the left needs to equal minus the first derivative of the aq function with regard to time minus bq times kappa times r upper bar q plus sigma square r divided by 2 bq to the power of 2. So basically everything on the right hand side of the PDE which does not depend on rt is a constant and that in aggregation needs to be equal to zero. Now the second restriction we get is that at the PDE rt on the left is multiplied by factor 1. Therefore we know whatever multiplies rt on the right hand side needs to aggregate up to 1 as well. That gives us the second restriction that 1 has to equal minus the first derivative of the bq function with regard to t plus bq times kappa. Now that second equation here, if you look at that, is a linear ordinary differential equation. So you use the integrating factor approach to find the solution that bq as a function of time to maturity has to equal 1 minus the exponential of minus kappa times time to maturity divided by kappa. So we found one part of the function. Now let's go for the other. So we want to find aq as a function of time to maturity. And therefore we now go to this first restriction. And that first restriction, if we look at that again, we have zero equals minus the first derivative of a with regard to time minus bq times kappa rq upper bar. We just determined bq as a function of kappa and then plus sigma square r over 2 times bq squared. Again, bq is known. So therefore you see that the way to get aq of t of time to maturity is simply to integrate that expression. Right? So we, we run this integration by saying aq of tau is just the starting value aq of 0, which we know is 0, plus and now the integral of daq over dt times dt. And the expression for the change of aq versus a change in t is just given in that PDE restriction. And it coincides just with the bq function times constants plus bq squared times constant. Plug that into the integration and run the integration yourself. 